What's going on everybody? I hope you're doing fantastic out there. So I've got a, a double unboxing for you. Uh, I've been sitting on these for a little bit. So um, this has been, again, it's been a, a long time coming. I've been sitting on these uh, since Blade Show Texas, trying to get caught up on a bunch of stuff. So we're going to jump into this. <clears throat> I'm going to start with the uh, more budget line here. So this was actually a um, prize that, uh, believe it or not, my wife actually won at Blade Show. They were doing um, a giveaway every day, uh, doing a little raffle. You'd get a ticket uh, from their booth, and then they would raffle. Uh, they would call a number. Anyway, uh, ended up getting this. So this is the QSP Gorilla in 14C with the Stonewash Blade and Green Micarta. So we'll go ahead and crack into this guy so y'all can see what all you get with these things. So typical QSP, you get your spec sheet, your spec card. So there is all of your specs, everything except for the weight, I guess. I'll get you the weight there. So just over a three point, let's just say a 3.4 inch blade. You've got a four and a half inch handle and right at eight inches overall. And of course, you do get the QSP Wolf sticker and the QSP Penguin sticker. And I don't know. I've never noticed the, the guy wearing a hat, but if that's always been there, I'm, I don't know. Crazy. Well, I guess I could look. Hold on. Let's see. I've got an old sticker here. Ah, so he changed his hat. So there's one of my old stickers. This guy's wearing a tie. And he's got a different hat on. Huh. I've never noticed that until just now. I, get, I wonder how many times they changed that. Anyway, <laughs> um, so this is a fantastic knife. I'll go ahead and tell you guys right now, um, if you can pick one up, you need to. Um, got to play with it a lot at Blade Show, and um, i played with it a little bit since then. So you have your QSP logo there on the pivot. It is a captured pivot. Uh, take a look at the flipper there. You do have uh, some fairly rounded jumping. It's not very, uh, doesn't give you a whole lot of traction. Um, but because of that last one up sweeping right there, it does grab a hold of the finger pretty well. Um, fairly smooth micarta that will wear in beautifully. Lots of contouring around the handle. Uh, you do have some finger grooves there. So that could be a blessing or a curse depending on the size of your hand. Well done on the flush mounted screws. You do have your lanyard hole there. It's not a very large lanyard hole, but... Uh, it is there, so it would probably be more... I don't know if you'd be able to get two pieces of paracord through there. Might be one where you'd have to tie the lanyard on. You do have a quarter-length backspacer. It looks to be black uh, G10. Um, other than that, it is open all the way. You, there you can see you do have some milling on the liners. Our centering is dead on. There you can see your steel liners. It is a standard liner lock. You got some jimping there on the back of the blade. And your pivots. A not deep carry pocket clip, but it is a very beefy pocket clip. And it is tight. Um, T6 on the pocket clip screws. It looks like T8s all around. And this is something I do sometimes forget to do, so I'll go ahead and do it now. Um, so we'll check a look at the screw machining. Fantastic there. Let's see, and T8 here. Really good and not a whole lot of wiggle there. Check our T8 here. Same as the previous screw. And same there, just a little bit of play. Definitely well within the acceptable tolerances, at least for me. And then our T6s are the same as the pivot. Zero play. Perfect, perfect, perfect there. <clears throat> so, again, that is a very unique pocket clip as far as the size and everything. Um, this is not a small knife, but it's not a massive knife. But that pocket clip, I don't think, would ever bend on you. Um, that thing is, that's a thick boy pocket clip. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the blade itself. So you do have a really beautiful stone wash blade. QSB does a fantastic job on their stone wash. We've got some oil there. Again, this knife has not been carried or used. This is right out of the box. Um, and you got your blade hole there for opening. I call it the smile. 
Um, a really nice swedge, drop point. Um, and there is your jimping up onto the thumb ramp there. Take a look at your grind. So you don't have a whole lot of a sharpening toil. I mean, there's room there for sharpening, but your plunge grind is very slopey, so it takes a while to terminate. So you're going to get a smile pretty quickly on this knife. Um, really clean grind, though. The grind looks really good. Take a look on this side. Same thing. The grind looks really good. I'll clean off some of that schmutz there. Um, one thing I will say is Bravo QSP. What do you not see on here? What do you not see? A ton of billboarding. The only thing that I want to see on my blade, now there's a few exceptions, but most of the time, the only thing I want to see on my blade is the blade steel. And even that, I like to see it hidden, things like that. Um, that's just a personal preference. But that is well done. Well done, QSP. Um, so let's take a look at that tip to see how well the grind is executed. So that, again, looks about as close to perfect as you can get. Um, we are looking a little favor on the, let's see, we might be perfect. I don't know. It's hard to tell with this tip. Try to get it turned up enough to where I can see it. Yeah, it looks like it might favor the clip side just a hair, but that's as close to perfect as I've seen out of a standard knife. So, bravo on that. You guys, as always, with my unboxings and things of that nature, <clears throat> um, chances are they're being done when other things are happening in my house. So, um, just ignore any background noise. But... Like I said, I, you know, spoiler alert, I absolutely love this knife. Um, so does my wife, which is, is kind of strange for her because typically if it's no, like a, a drab color, she doesn't really gravitate toward it. Um, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that she won it, but also it has a really great flipper action. Detent is a little on the light side for my liking, but it works, uh, works just fantastically either way. Um, reverse flick with index and middle finger is fantastic. Um, again, flipper action is great. The detent is tuned. I mean, uh, the detent's in a good location. So once you break the, or once you break the lock, there is where your detent clicks. And if you see when you're all the way up, now you can see my thumb, when you're all the way up on the lock bar, um, you still can get the knife past that detent. You don't have to worry about, a, you know, what I call double clutching or anything like that. Um, no lock rock, no issues there. Um, lock up solid. Let's see, can we see the lock up here? We should be able to since it's a stone wash blade. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the light. <clears throat> there you go. So solid lock up. There you can again see that ceramic detent ball. Um, we are 100% locked up. And zero issues there. Again, it is a straight liner lock with lots of milling. <clears throat> All right, uh, ergonomics on this thing are pretty doggone good. Um, feel in the hand, at least for my hand, even though it has <clears throat> the, uh, the the finger cutouts, finger grooves, or whatever, um, they're not in a bad spot, at least for me anyway. You can see my index finger wraps around right there, middle finger, and so it works for my hand shape. It's not going to work for everybody. It might be un slightly uncomfortable for someone. Uh, the one thing I will say is I do feel the edge of that pocket clip right here in the, in the meat of my hand. Um, you know, time will tell, but it doesn't feel like it's going to be you know hateful or anything like that. Um, so don't really have any suspicions that it's going to be a problem. Um, at least in you know light to medium use, it might become an issue with constant hard use. Just right there, and you can see with me gripping a hold of it, you can kind of see that little spot here. Let's zoom in so you can see it. That little spot right there where the pocket clip's digging into my hand. So that's right there. So whenever it's gripping it hard, that's where it's digging in at. You can see it right there. So again, it's uh, it probably won't be an issue for everyone. <clears throat> Just uh, giving you my mileage on that. Again, out of the box. Super smooth. Hydraulic action. We've talked about how much I like that. Um, even for this being a fairly, or not a large blade, but a bigger blade. It's on the, uh, you know, considered a large EDC knife. 
Um, that's great there. You got just a hair of lock stick on the liner lock. <clears throat> but that is most likely due to a little bit of oil. So like I do with all my knives, I will be taking this apart, cleaning it, re-oiling it, uh, adjusting the pivot, getting it perfect. <clears throat> I might even adjust that detent just a little bit to make it a little more of a, a snappy action. But right out of the box, though, I cannot really complain. Uh, thumb, st uh, thumb access is pretty good for a slow roll. Um, I have a hard time doing uh, thumb holes with a flick but you can still do it uh, for those that are well versed in that probably won't be a problem but again the slow roll is fantastic um, reverse flick is money on this thing it really is um, whether you use your middle finger or your index um, both are really easy um, the the blade hole is sized well and because of the shape which i don't know why more people don't do it i mean i know it's not the prettiest thing in the world but that shape allows you to really, you know, get your finger in there and just, you know, it just works. <clears throat> so, um, let me go ahead and get you guys a weight on this thing and we will do a quick cut test as well. So, got our trusty piece of paper that we've been recycling. And is there ever any doubt with the QSP? QSP is pretty consistently one of the sharpest knives out of the box that you can get. Um, next to Vosteed, um, and even Trevisa has been doing really good here lately. Um, these guys seem to just absolutely nail, um, factory sharpening and, uh, yeah, so no issues there whatsoever. Uh, all right, let's see if we can't get a weight on this guy. Let's go ahead and close her up. So we are at four and a half ounces. So a little on the heavy side when you consider the length to weight ratio but again for steel liners uh, even though they are uh you cut out and everything um they're not massive cutouts so there could be a little bit more of lightning there and then also because it is a full size handle you do get a little added weight but all in all i am uh very happy with this guy all right so coming in on the second part of this here uh, let me get this daggone thing out of the box. The box is tight. Oh, that's right. This box had some had to, had a boo boo on the way here. Um, so it is like locked down. My goodness. All right, there we go. So this is the QSP Hornbill with the S35 VN stone black stone wash and blue carbon fiber. Again, this is one that I was able to snag on a super duper sale. So you got a three and a quarter inch blade, four and a quarter inch handle, seven and a half overall. And there are your specs. We'll get you the weight here in just a little bit. Typical, you have your QSP sticker and it is different again. You've got the red hat on this time, so that's pretty cool. Something I'll have to pay attention to, see if I can't collect them all. And then inside your typical unboxing or uh, packaging for QSP, let's take a look at this guy. So this is an older knife. It's been around for a little bit. Uh, it's one that's been on my radar for a while just because it is black and blue. I mean, come on. What's well, not to love about that? Um, so you do have some texturing left on the carbon fiber from where it was being milled. You have the QSP pivot there as well. One styling cue or, or whatever, I'm not sure about. I've never understood this piece here. So I'm not sure why that's sectioned out like that. Um, they do it on both sides. It's a really strange design cue. I'm sure it has a purpose. I just don't know what it is. Um, there again, you can see that milled out carbon fiber the beautiful blue hues to it there you go you can really start seeing that stuff now absolutely gorgeous fairly generous lanyard hole pretty flush on the screws um, we are perfectly centered you do have a steel liners this is somewhat of an inset liner lock so you got a little bit of section there that is inset but the rest of it is oh excuse me open open pillar construction 
Here is the clip side. So it looks like we do have T6 and T8 hardware. Your pocket clip, it is another kind of a unique pocket clip from QSB. Um, looks to be a pretty solid titanium clip, I guess. I'm assuming that's a titanium clip. Honestly, I don't know. Quite honestly, it doesn't matter. A um, little bit of QSP branding there. Let's go ahead and open this guy up. Whoo! First time playing with that. That's some great action there. Um, really nice black washed blade. Got a little bit of oil on there. Let's just wipe that down real quick. All right. And there you can see your... Um, Thumb stud and blade hole opening there. It's supposed to mimic uh, the eyes of the bird, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then the blade is supposed to look like the beak. I am pretty sure on that anyway. So again, amazing job, QSP. No billboarding on the blade. No billboarding on this side. Let's see, where does it even say the blade steel? Or does it? Let me see real quick. Ah, <laughs> so you cannot see it when the knife is shut, but when it's open, you can see your S35VN right there. Very, very good job, QSP. Um, again, take a look at your grind. So this is a flat grind. It is a very thin flat grind. This is not a super thick blade, and it is almost a full flat grind. But it is super thin, and because of that, oh, come on, focus, focus, focus. Let's go. Look at how much sharpening room you have. You got almost like hollow grind levels of sharpening room. Amazing job there. Great finger choil. Great jimping on the back. Uh, very, very, very grippy. Um, thumb studs are a good size. Again, take a look at that grind. Beautiful grind. Something tells me this thing is going to be an absolute slicey little beast. Because that is super thin behind the edge. And that's great. Because S35 is a great steel to have a somewhat thinner edge. Um, at least, you know, in my experience, your mileage may vary. Everybody's mileage is different. Um, you know, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. So, beautiful, beautiful knife. I really dig the aesthetic of it. Like I said, other than just that little spot, that part right there, if it did not have that, I think this would be a stunning knife. It's still a, it's still a good looking knife. I love the carbon fiber. I love the um, milling out there. Everything looks great. It's just that 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 little that little spot just kind of irks me a little bit. So let's take a look at the action. I've not opened or closed this. Well, I've opened it once, but I haven't closed this knife. So let's see how it does. Something tells me it's going to be great. Oh, yeah. Beautiful little hydraulic action. So index finger reverse flick. Beautiful, really crispy detent. See, thumb stud action. Great. It is a little hydraulic on this action, a little too much. So... It almost seems like there might be a little bit of adjusting that needs to be done there. It's a little on the... I don't know if you can hear it. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see if you can hear it. I won't know until post if you could hear that or not. It has a little bit of a gritty uh, grittiness to the bearings. So that's just not an issue. That just needs to be taken apart and cleaned, which is something I do with all my new knives anyway. So... But it does drop shut, especially when you have when you when you pull down on that you know, that lock bar, it uh, it wants to come down. So it does have a generous um, finger tool. So that does allow if you especially if you're up high enough on the lock bar when you break it, it comes down and it does catch your thumb without having to worry about getting hit by the blade. So that is great. Uh, middle finger flick is great. Um, I can almost uh, ring finger. It. Um, front flipper looks a little odd, but let's see how well it how well it works. So 
So I'm not a, a front flipper aficionado, but it's a little difficult for me. Um, but with honestly, with the thumb studs being that good um, and the reverse flick being that good, it is just, yeah, I don't have any issues with that at all. And that detent is crispy, tuned just perfectly. So very nice, very, very nice. Um, great job all around QSP. Let's take a look at the paper cutability. Let's see here, get a fresh edge. Again, like I said previously, QSP, factory edges from QSP are absolutely insane. That, that was me on that one. So, getting here. Yeah, baby. I mean, that is just... Just money. Man, that piece of paper's done. So. Absolute, absolute money. Um, you know, trade secret here. I screwed up. I forgot this was a two-part video, so I am going to get the other knife out while I am thinking about it. <laughs> so I packed the other knife back up to do a unboxing video for the shorts. Anyway... Let's uh, let's kind of go into some stuff here. Ergonomics, fantastic. Um, you know, it is a similar sized knife to the Gorilla. Oops, sorry, let's get you in frame here. So very similar sized knives um, in almost every way. Uh, blade thickness is a little bit more here. Um, this is definitely it feels like a little more of a substantial knife. We'll see here in just a minute about the weight. But with this one, um, with your choke down point there, um, you know, it comes right to the edge of the hand. You do have the ability to choke up. You also have, because of the blade cut, or the, the way this knife is designed, you have from when you're down here, you've got the jimping, everything locks your thumb in. And when you're up here, you have a really nice landing pad that is just absolutely perfect, at least for my hand. That is fantastic. And then if you do a pinch grip, again, it just lands right in the right spot. Um, again, at least for my hands. So extremely impressed with this. I do not feel the pocket clip at all. Um, get bare down on it. I mean, you can see a little bit where it does imprint into my hand. There are zero sharp edges on it. Um, everything feels great there. All in all, yeah, this is a, a fantastic blade. Um, if you pick one up, especially when they're on sale, um, if you haven't already, um, QSP does some amazing work with their S35. Um, I've had the, is it the Pelican? I think it's the Pelican. Um, they have a, they've had a, a very large, um, you know, almost a four inch or three and a half inch S35 in my Carta knife. You can pick up for right around a hundred bucks. For a long time, um, I've had one for a while. It's one of my favorite Warren Cliff blades. Um, and they do a fantastic job with their S35. This knife, again, even with the slightly gritty action, is still stellar with the thumb stud and the reverse flick. Like I said, just that that detent is tuned just perfectly. And this one's actually just with flicking it a few times, it is already breaking in. I just about stabbed myself. Um, still a little gritty on the action. Like I said, that's just probably some leftover machining gunk and the, uh, in the knife itself. So we'll go ahead and set these guys up here. And I just want to thank everybody as always, you know, please continue to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Have a knife day. And as always, remember to be kind be humble. Be EDC. We'll catch you on the next one.